you know, the, the phenomena of the serial killer is very much associated with, with the financial success of a nation. In very, very poor countries, not only are serial killers, but as the country gets richer, uh, like in America is, a, is the most egregious example, there are reckoned to be 500 serial killers at work at any one time. At the time of Jack the Ripper, England was the richest country on earth, bar none, you know. And you're having serial killers emerging in India yeah. now because India is going, going, is wealthy and is going to be super wealthy. Yeah. You see, you're going to get more and more of them here. Uh, they're known by the FBI as recreational killers, okay. sociopaths, recreational tennis, recreational football, recreational cricket, recreational killing. Okay. And, and it's... It, it's a kind of, they get a buzz, you know, out of it. But if, if you're spending your whole life trying to grow food for your family or sell it, you, you know, you're not going to think about the luxury of going out and allowing your id free reign to go and murder people. I mean, the phenomena is not as modern as I've just sort of indicated because uh, we all know, you know, the thuggy in, in the thuggies in India, 200 years ago yeah. were, were serial killers, yes. you know. So you have a tradition of it here, the same as, as, the same as in, in the United States. The reason Jack the Ripper became so famous was his murders coincided with the telegraph and the telephone and the beginning of mass media, yeah. mass newspaper publication, and that made him famous and he was playing up to the press. He loved it. He loved, yes. he loved his fame. Yeah, no. otherwise he wouldn't have been playing with the police and sending all no. these letters. No, 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 exactly. He, because possibly he knew that it's going to, uh, it's going to make it to news and that's what he wanted. Yeah, and he knew because he was a, a very senior Freemason in the same Masonic Lodge as the king-to-be, Edward VII, yeah. that they couldn't touch him. And there's a man called Robert Ressler who, is a, who invented criminal profiling in, uh, in Virginia for the FBI and he calls that thing of serial killers walking with God. Okay. Their egos are so enormous. A, 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 a psychopath's ego is so enormous. And he has no remorse. Yeah. You know, he can kill a, kill a three-year-old girl and go and, have a, uh, go and have a glass of whiskey with his friends. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't impact. It's not even a fly. Yes, it took 50 I, I, I didn't start out uh, wanting anything to do with Jack the Ripper. I wanted to research uh, 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 I wanted to do a mystery and I'd been reading Raymond Chandler's book, Raymond Chandler speaking, and he talks about the Herbert Wallace case in Liverpool in 1931. Wallace murdered his wife, yeah. but the, it was so cleverly done that every piece of evidence that said he murdered her is counteracted by a piece of evidence that says he couldn't have done. Okay. And, and it's a really fascinating case and I wanted to go after Herbert Wallace. So I was in Los Angeles, uh, living in LA, and I came back to London to try and research it. And I ran into this true crime researcher uh, to try and get material on Wallace. Yeah. And he said, yeah, Wallace is an interesting case, but he's not in the same league as the mother of them all, uh, Jack the Ripper. Yeah. And I said, I didn't really know anything about... Anyway, we talked about the Ripper, and slowly I was losing Wallace and going over to Jack. Okay. So he's my man. I started by reading everything ever written about him. Uh, the reason it took so long, the, the, the book, was because I had to read every Victorian newspaper, I had to read everybody else's books, uh, I had to read all these police files, uh, and so there was about two years of reading before I even started to think about trying to write it, you know. Uh, months and months of work. Well, I'm not uh, antipathetic towards Freemasons. I got, n I got n my book isn't about how horrible Freemasons are. Yeah. My book is about how horrible a serial killer is, was, who happens to be a Freemason. You yeah. know, okay. and the chief of the Metropolitan Police and all his detectives were all Freemasons, all of them. So there are Freemasons looking for a Freemason, and they dare not look because yeah. they've sworn an oath to yeah. always help a Freemason. Uh, my, my friend Johnny Depp's in that, isn't yes, he? Playing yes, Abilene, yes. and uh, Abilene was a real gruff old Englishman, not the lovely not, not Johnny divine Depp. Johnny Depp. Yes. No, it was nothing to do with Johnny Depp. The film is very daft, you know, but it's yeah. entertaining. Yes. It's a traditional sort of ripper story of. But that, that does bring the female angry. 
It, they do, they use the Freemasonic angle, yeah, yeah, they do. But they don't explain it. Yes. Uh, you know, Abilene was a Freemason. Um, okay. So that obviously the movie does not say. No, it doesn't. But, so there was they didn't know it. <laughs> oh, okay. So there was an Abilene in real life who was involved in the investigation? Yeah, he was, he was set up uh, inside the myth as being the detective that was chasing Jack the Ripper yeah. to avoid bringing Sir Charles Warren, who was the most famous Freemason alive, into the into the case. So okay. if they say, oh, it's Abilene, but nobody knew that Abilene was a Freemason, everyone <clears throat> everyone knew Sir Charles Warren was a Freemason, it yeah. was open knowledge. So let's say Abilene is hunting the Ripper, which he wasn't. Yeah. Warren was supposed to be, which he didn't. He was a misogynist par excellence. He hated women and one woman in particular that he considered the lowest prostitute on earth. Yes, and so he killed these filthy, lowest prostitutes he could find as surrogates for her until he got to her. And then he got to her and then he did her. You know. But uh, he poisoned his brother. He got his brother poisoned through his wife. Without... And got her blamed. Yeah, yeah. So, so she, she obviously was sort of arrested for the murder. And... She was arrested for the murder and he was the principal prosecution witness against her. Okay. And he'd set it all up. He enjoyed his work, he loved what he did. And even when he put her in prison for life, she, she was sentenced to death, yeah. but she was repealed. And even when he put her in prison for life, he carried his spite on against her, stopping her having photographs of her children or anything like that when she was in jail. Okay. And she was in jail for 15 years, for something she was completely innocent of. And the authorities knew it. The whole trial was as corrupt as the investigation into the Ripper himself. Well, because he was a, he was a psychopath, and uh, psychopaths don't, he killed men as well. Psychopaths take great joy and great power in walking with God and killing kids. Yeah. And he killed just before uh, um, around December in, in 1888. He killed a little boy of seven and yeah. a little girl of eleven. And I think they were surrogates. I can't prove this, so I don't say it in the book. But I think they were surrogates for Florence Maybrick's children, because she had a little boy of seven and a little girl of 11. Okay. So he killed them. And with the little boy, as I said in my thing, he turned him into a Freemasonic symbol. Yes. And the little girl, he put a cable toe around her neck, yeah. which is like a noose, like a noose. and yeah. ripped okay. her up. Yeah, it's called The Block. It's a two-hand uh, man and a woman. Okay. And um, it's about a girl in New York stealing a very famous writer's manuscript. As he's writing his novel that sells okay. for millions, she's yeah. stealing the pages, changing all the names, okay. and selling it to a sleazy publisher as her own work. Okay. She's his secretary, so as he writes it, she changes the names and sells it on. Now he gets writer's block. And so she, she, she signed a contract for her book and yeah. they're on top of her. Okay. And so she has to unblock him. Okay. And, and it's a big love story comes out of that. Oh.